brightest absorbing prema contrasted against the black background of previous material existence characterized by abject forgetfulness of the Lord. The Nitya Siddha Jivas, as well as Krishna's divine Sarup Shakti Tattva counterparts, and even Sri Krishna himself, being always transcendentally situated and ever free from the influence of the modes of material nature, can never have such an extremely enhanced contrastive experience of the extent of the Lord's compassion. Only the emancipated jiva, fully evolved to the acme of individually achievable transcendency, can most perfectly empathize with the plight of the conditioned soul. And only such a thoroughly unfettered devotee, having perfectly completed the progressive course of Braja Bhakti Bhajan, can bring about in Krishna an enhanced appreciation of his own golden quality of benevolence, an appreciation otherwise unfeasible in the spiritual world. The amount of artificially imposed ecclesial governance in the matter of guru appointment under any clumsy pretext can change for half a hairbreadth the God-sanctioned progress of a jiva sojourn through eternal time. To advocate otherwise on the plea of administrative safeguard and quality control is to indecorously vaunt one's lack of faith in the inescapable will of the Supreme and the Acharya's actual instructions concerning the principles of disciplic succession. It is true that the highest realization is to take all risk to go out of one's way to save the world. That is our mission for sure. Still, even so, still higher than that, ultimately, the very highest realization, the profoundest mission, is to save oneself. First, make yourself spiritually fit. Doctor, heal thyself. First, chant and dance in ecstasy like a madman. Then worry about saving the rest of the world. Higher than becoming guru is to become an accomplished, fully self-realized disciple. And that hardly implies that one should pompously pose as a king with no clothes to passionately impress the little neophytes with how much one might have superficially garnered from the lines of letters on the pages of piles of books. Nowhere is it mentioned in any Shastra that neophytes and intermediate devotees achieve prema by initiating hundreds and thousands of disciples. It is really best not to accept any disciples at all. I repeat, this is Srila Prabhupada's instruction from a purport of Chaitanya Charitamrita. It is really best not to accept any disciples at all. Better, by far, we humbly endeavor to chant Shudanam via the intent prosecution of Yuga Dharma Nam Sankirtan with a view to achieve ultimate Ragmaya perfection at the feet of Sri Guru. Then, we may hope to become truly empowered instruments in the hands of the predecessor Acharyas. We must always remember, it is not that authority constitutes truth. Truth constitutes authority. That is Guru Parampara. Diplomatic affairs tend to dismantle Brahminical culture. They who prefer to bend, water down, compromise or obscure the truth to suit various inveigling, materially conceived managerial agenda on the plea of propagating the Krishna consciousness movement are not truthful Brahmins. Then what to speak of being Paramahamsa Vaishnavas. It would serve us well to remember that our beloved Guru Maharaj, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, after having spent nine preparatory years in Vrindavan, went out to benefit the people of the Western world as a fully self-realized spiritual master, not as a fake-it-till-you-make-it, relatively unimpressive, struggling, neophytic, superficially polished cyber preacher, having little, if any, actual cognition by way of divine revelation as to the details regarding his highest potential Braja Sarup. On this holy occasion of Srila Prabhupada's Vyas Puja festival, 
I humbly request everyone who claims to be his follower, please don't be distracted by superfluous pursuits. Our human lives are very, very short. Moreover, the current of world affairs is extremely precarious. The urgency is paramount. If we actually want to become empowered representatives of His Divine Grace, then let us please boil down the milk, making it thick and sweet by seriously concentrating our endeavors, focusing our intention, fo focusing our attention as much as possible on the essence of what our Srila Prabhupada is ultimately all about. <coughs> Confirmed. Whatever we understand about Srila Prabhupada according to our individual maturity, level of purity, capacity, and angle of vision, we should know beyond a shred of doubt that our Srila Prabhupada is a topmost Brajbasi, very, very, very dear to Srimati Radharani. And by His mercy, we can also become similarly dear to her if we deeply understand His mission, sincerely take shelter of the Yuga Dharma, Nam Sankirtan, and try our best to follow in His footsteps without material contrivance or mental concoction. If my words have somehow in any way ruffled anyone's feathers, please forgive them. Please forgive them, my words. They are only doing their duty to represent my inner feelings and realizations as per the perception of reality allotted to me by the Lord of my heart. Purity is the force. I thank you for tolerating my meager existence. Hadar Nam Eva Kevalam. Om Tat Sat. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Thank you.